guys, welcome to my City Builder channel here on YouTube. Today I'm going to show you my process how to load realistic height maps into city skylines and how to improve them even further. So there are a couple of things you might need uh, for this purpose. First of all, you need an image editing program. and that tutorial I'm using Adobe Photoshop, but you can use almost any other image editing program that offers the abilities to use layers and you need a screenshot tool. I'm using screen presser here and well for that case one other website like Terrain Party but you'll find of course all the links below. So first of all we are starting by opening our favorite web browser. In my case it's Opera, um, yeah, it all ready loaded the basic website of Terrain Party. Uh, this usually starts somewhere here, here in the middle or almost in the middle of Europe, in the northern parts of Europe. Uh, you can see this little blue square here, uh, which is the area uh, that that kind of defines the, the part of the map that you're going to export as a height map um, based on realistic geodata. So what I'm doing now, since I want to start with a little area down here in Japan, um, is that I select my favorite area here. It's really important um, in that situation that you make sure that this is set to the standard values uh, that says 18 kilometers up here. You can change, uh, change the scaling easily by using the plus and minus buttons. Um, but for city skylines, you should definitely use the size of 18 uh, kilometers, which means that this big square has a size of 18 kilometers in total. Um, those a little bit thicker lines mark the five by five squares that City Skylines uses. Yeah, in its standard settings, if you're using one of the mods like the 81 tiles mods, then you're able to use the nine by nine squares easily. But for now, I'm going to focus on that area here because that's the place that I want to rebuild. Um, just to make sure that I can easily find these files later on, I quickly switch to Google Maps, um, scroll to the same area here, just to know that this town is called Kushimoto. And yeah, so that I can easily find my files later. So moving back to Terrain Party, the first thing I'm usually doing is uh, just taking a quick screenshot of this area. It's just a rough one. It doesn't need to be that exact because you can adjust everything else in Photoshop later. And then I'm using the export button and naming it 2011 Japan. And zero zero one for the version number. Then I'm pressing um, OK for that reason. For now, it takes a little while until the file is downloaded. It says it's already complete. Um, the next step is I'm moving to Photoshop and I'm creating a new image file that again says 2020, 11, Japan, Moto 001, just so that I can find it easily later. Um, now follows one important step. I'm changing the width and the height both to 4,000 pixels. For the resolution, I'm taking 72 pixels 
per inch or DPIs. I stick to the RGB mode. The only importance is here I switch to 16 bits instead of 8 bits. 8 bits is the standard setting, but 16 is a little bit better for my purpose here because it allows me to distinguish the uh, gradients of the yeah grayscale image a little bit better. And then I create a new file, <laughs> paste in the screenshot that I just took from Terrain Party uh, and scale it to my desired size and make sure that it well, roughly fits into the 4000 by 4000 pixels area. Then I confirm the transformation and lock this layer for now because I'm yeah, not moving it a lot. So the next step that follows, I have a look at my downloads folder. I extract all the files included with the zip file. And afterwards you can see that here are four height maps already included. One is pretty much useless which is the SRTM30 Plus version. Um, it's way too blurry for my purpose, but still I'm going to show you um, the difference between these files. So I'm importing these Photoshop first. I'm scaling them up to 4,000 to 4,000 pixels just making sure that everything, the whole canvas area is actually covered. And just to be able to show to you why this is actually important or why it's important to have a more detailed look at the whole image, I'm adding a new kind of settings layer for brightness and contrast. I'm cranking up the brightness, removing the contrast almost completely. And then you can see the differences between those files quite easily. So two should actually be almost like the same, which is the Aster 30 meters and the merged file, they are usually the same or almost the same. But now we are coming to a difference. The SRTM3 version is usually a bit rougher when it comes to the coastlines, the coastal areas. Um, but this actually has one main difference. It shows me here the river flowing down from the mountains better than this version. And there you can see the SR TM30 plus version is, well, at least for my purpose, from my perspective, pretty much useless because it doesn't reflect the true height map area in any, any, any way. So what I'm doing now, just imagine we do not have this brightness contrast layer. It looks different. And when you have a look at the info setting, you can use the, what's it called? The drop tool, eyedropper tool. And then you can measure out, well, there it says, of course, zero, zero, zero RGB values. But when you're getting closer to the shore, it has a difference of, well, let's say it starts with two and then makes somewhere a bigger jump between four and 14. Um, so what I'm doing here, I'm changing the visibility of the brightness and contrast layer again 
um, resetting the value for now um, by removing the contrast this jump gets even less than it's actually desired so I'm cranking up the brightness maybe by 25 and removing the contrast by minus 10 and then I would say we're almost set because here you can see there is a land area here's the sea there's the sea and I think well this is a pretty good result for now um, I'm going to save this Photoshop file to make sure that I can keep it for for later saving it and now I'm exporting this file as a PNG um, saving it in my city builder folder well, let's save it just here I click on save and then we're basically done for now I'm keeping this Photoshop file because I'm using it later on for a second tutorial how you're able to use realistic street maps as well as height maps in f city skylines as an overlay and therefore we'll need that file again so I'll keep it so you can close down Photoshop you can close your browser because you don't need it any longer and then it's about time to open up city skylines so having opened city skylines the first step you need to do is editor section and start a map editor and start a new map there i'm i'm always thinking about which which kind of theme built-in theme would be the best for Japan to be honest I I'm always tending to use Boreal but this doesn't really reflect the yeah I think it's more temperate up there because it's below Tokyo um, so I'm choosing left-hand traffic for now I'm using the temperate theme and I create a new map after this one is loaded I will quickly show you how to import the height maps in an easy way so now the map editor has fully loaded and what you can see here is a blank map in city skylines and the easiest way to get your height maps imported height maps is by clicking on this little folder down here then it opens up one um, folder on your hard drive it's usually in your users folder below app data local colossal area city skylines add-ons map editor and height maps so just the first thing we need and then of course the th second thing we need is on the one hand original Kushimoto area um, height maps that I downloaded from the internet it's just to show you the difference you actually will need it to your individual height map and then I'm loading my individual height map as well into this folder and then you can see everything's imported here and well first of all we are starting with this map most unusable map that you can ever think of um, which yeah you can already dump and you shouldn't use it well this actually doesn't look that bad especially the coastlines everything's covered here the river area seems to be fine. Mountains are okay, not very detailed here. 
putting the next ones, you can see a whole lot of difference in the coastal areas here. The river is still good enough for my purpose, but the mountains are way more detailed. Should be the same. And now we are coming to the final result, which will change a couple of things, especially in the mountain area. Makes it a little bit more steep, which is kind of good. And the height of the coastal areas is a little bit more than it was here, as you can see. So I'm usually tending to use this over exaggerated version of the map because um, in a second step what I'm doing is I'm smoothening out the areas here just to make sure that gets a bit yeah a bit more realistic but still is like the same you can very very softly smoothen things out here then you get a really good result for the map in the meantime um, you could already fill this with water then continuing process of the coastal areas here. Just, I don't want to change too much um, because I want to keep the map as realistic as possible yeah, and I think when you're done with smoothening everything I will show you the final result later then you're good to go to save your map So now here's the finished result of my map for city skylines of the Kushimoto area in Japan. Um, hope you like this result. In case you do have any comments, recommendations or concerns or whatever, just leave me a note, just leave me a message. I'm happy to answer and help whenever I can. So thanks for tuning in and hope to see you soon. Bye.